Hello guys, today we are playing a 6 player free for all match on the map Nimiril Deer in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. Everybody is picking random and we will get to play with the Isengard army. Who now has the strength to face against the forces of Isengard and Shanks? Okay, we are in the middle, so we will get sandwiched, but to be honest, that's something I got used to, because that happens legit every single time I play free for all match, but I know you guys enjoy this a lot. Hopefully, it's gonna be full action-packed, hopefully it's gonna be a game you will remember and tell your children about it in the future. And I'm so happy guys, thank you very much for watching the videos, it's kinda insane that BFME videos are still getting this many views and likes, you guys are awesome, thank you very much for that, really means a lot. Okay, it's a good faction, top side. And that's bad. <laughs> because evil factions, you, it's kind of tricky. I mean, when I need to give you a recommendation, a tip when you play free for all matches. Oh, it's a good faction also. We are sandwiched actually from two good factions in the middle of the map. When I need to give you a tip when you play free for all matches yourself, the tip has to be keep fighting all the time. Camping is horrible choice in free for all matches. The reason is simple, the more you fight, the more power points you will get. And later on, it's very important to unlock the Balrog. Because if you keep camping, the opponent players, they might fight against each other, and you will lose the power point battle. And that's horrible. But when you keep fighting always, then you will get more and more power points collected, which might be the game winning point. I mean, as you guys know, in Battle for Middle-earth games, the power points have an incredible impact. But in free for all matches, it's even more important. Trust me on that one. I think I'm gonna go for full eco first, guys. I'm gonna build furnaces exclusively, and then I wanna build uh, the ward pit. Because with the ward pit, we can actually play a bit more, you know, offensively, and also party speed in those big fights. The Uruks, they are fast, but... Hey, thanks for the follow on the Twitch channel, appreciate it. Really means a lot. The Uruks, they are fast, but it's a huge map. And in order to be able to reach the opposite side of the map fast enough, you need to recruit the cavalry from Isengard. Okay, I'm actually pretty tempted to also go for Lourdes first and then go for the Warp Pit after. The earlier you go for Lourdes, the easier it is to level them up to level 5 to get more additional damage leadership. With the Warp and the Uruks are just too strong. Look how long they can stay here and fight them. And during all this time, the opponent player cannot pressure us. We have now Lourdes cooking. He's gonna be joining the battlefield very soon. But the Warchan is off now, now we gotta bail. Okay, dude, look our eco. And that's also one thing you need to understand. In free-for-all matches, especially in a six-player free-for-all match, you will get the money way, way faster. Oh, and look at this. Would you look at that, boys? <laughs> Isengard is surrounded by two Rohan, just like in the film. But unlike in the film, I am this time commanding the Isengard army. And I'm not planning to lose against one of these Rohans. Trust me on that one, guys. Okay, so War Pits. And then I will be recruiting two, maybe three war guiders and demolish it afterwards and then go for the armory. Because we need infantry. Like basically, if you go for cavalry only, you will at some point of the game get out skill from Rohan. Rohan is just much more support for the cavalry. He has Elma and also Theorin with Glorious Charge. It means in long terms, when you go for the war guiders, you will get... I mean, you have no chance, right? To win. So basically, we need pikemen, we need Uruk crossbowmen combination. We need to also recruit Saruman. The white wizard leads on. I'm gonna creep in the meantime. Again, the earlier you creep, the more money you will get. And we will also get additional settlements. Now cripple. We can throw the sword now and take down the layer a bit faster. Let's trample down those peasants. They have no chance. Against the Vork riders. My wards are hungry, boys. Okay, nice you. Nice you, nice you, nice you. And uh, the thing is, um, there is a chance the opponent might also go for the heroes. Basically, in free-for-all matches, you have m way more opportunities as you get the money faster collected. And there is a chance the Rohan factions, they can go for Legolas, Gimli, Aragorn. And that's why, and that's where Lords can shine bright like a diamond and hit like an absolute truck with the level 3 carnage. Legolas has no chance. So when we can cripple Legolas, 
or even Gimli in early levels, we can easily take him down. But we need to make sure that Legolas, uh, Lourdes gets the last hit. Boom, level 3. Nice. Let's use War Chant, split them up, and go for the map control. That's amazing, dude. Look our money, guys. We can at, at this point, we can even save up for the White Wizard. Okay, let's go and try to deal as much damage as we can. I see the Ritter Mark. Oh, look, he's creeping. Some, okay. Is this Legolas, actually? How many Rohans are included in this one, actually? I, I think in total, three Rohans. A classical situation, guys. Okay. Okay, I'm coming for you, Legolas. You better run. I can also pick up the Palantir. I think I'm going to do this. So I can outrun him. Palantir gives additional movement speed. And now Lourdes is zooming. Lourdes is zooming. Legolas, I'm coming for you. You can bring Aragorn all you want, but now... You will never be able to move. And Lourdes, the fighting Urukai can throw the sword, use Carnage, and Arrivederci, my good friend, Legolas. Oh, Elendil to scare the Warcraters off. Oh, he uses Atelas. Okay, I see you, Aragorn, but hey, Lourdes is just hitting like a truck, dude. And level 5, a comp. Okay, okay. Aragorn is angry, though, when he's using Blade Master. Oh my goodness, don't lose the Warcraters! When he's using Blade Master, you gotta bail. You don't wanna fight against him. He's the best fighter in the game. Especially with Anduril and uh, Zaid. Anduril and Blade Master combination. He's so tanky while he's hitting like a truck. Look at Gimli. Look, look. <laughs> How many Legolas is? Aragorn. Dude. Uh, I don't want to lose my loads. Hopefully. And there is also a Gondor. Dude, am I actually surrounded with good factions only? Am, am, I the, am I the only evil faction in this game? Because I see three Rohans and one Gondor. I don't know the, uh, the last guy. But so far, I seem to be the only evil faction player in this game. And I like it. I like it. My wolves hungry. Keep the wolves under control. The wolves under control. Okay, now it's upgrade time. And the second upgrades are purchased, we can actually demolish the armory and go for the Uruk pit. Let's level them up. And give them experience. Boom, level two. That's good. I mean, to be honest, money is not a problem, especially not for Isengard. Even in late game, we will have so many tools. Like, we will have devastation, we will have industry, we will have field of fire, so actually never run out of money but still early on you cannot do everything at the same time so we need to upgrade them we need to recruit uruk army we need to also eventually build some siege weapons as we are facing against rohans and gondors and in order to break through their gates and their wall we gotta take it down and i know you guys are liking the explosive mine action and i'm planning to spam a lot of explosive mines in this game I don't know, man. I think this is going to be a fiesta game, boys. I think this is going to be a game you will enjoy. <laughs> I like this walk rider mobility, though. Look, we, we can actually actively participate in the, ma in the map. I'm going to also use Palantir to see what is going on. Because as we are not fighting, we can actually see what is going on on the other side of the map. Dude, Isengard. I, I got to play Isengard so many times lately. Because every time I'm picking random, 80% of the time, I get to play Isengard faction. I don't know. But I cannot complain. Oh, Aragorn, I see you. I can fight this, I guess, with the war chants. Oh, Lord's leadership. Oh, he's using Elendil. But now if we feel resistant, Aragorn is no more. And that's what I'm talking about. Now is the time for us to get power points. I'm going to fireball you, my friend. I'm going to put some dirt in your eyes. Boom, Legolas. <laughs> Let's go. You want to fight two Rohan? I'm telling you guys, we are sandwiched from two Rohans at the same time. But... The Riddermark doesn't stand a chance against the white hand of the mighty Wizard Saruman. Now, dude, I'm cash voting so much. The amount of money we are making in a few seconds is actually kind of insane. Dude, uh, okay, now we need to build siege works, get some ballista up on the field, and start sieging. And we don't need industry, really. So I went for the, for the tainted land just in case the opponent might go for a tricky play with the Alvin Wood, so I'm ready to cover this land. And keep my leadership bonuses active. Because as we are talking, Lord's leadership, Saruman leadership, War Chant, I don't think there is an army that can fight against this. And if there is an army that can fight against this, we can always pick up the uh, Freezing Rain later on and shut their leadership bonuses down. Oh, what is happening here? I see a slaughterhouse. So, okay. Boom, sun on your face. 
the wizard and the fighting uruka are next to each other boys you'll have to see it okay now it's the only problem is in the more players are involved in a gameplay the less command points you will have right and basic oh there is a gandalf okay you want to do this gandalf i want to cripple you down and I, I will kick you down my friend i can use palantir but i gotta watch out there is a gandalf i don't want to actually you know <laughs> I don't want him to mess me up. Uh, and he, he's smart. He doesn't want to do this. I mean, obviously. Because when I cripple him, he will be dead. But there's nothing he can do. Even though I have no pikeman. Maybe he could have survived this. But it looks like he doesn't want to risk the biscuit. I mean, with heal and, um, you know, with a good up blast, you can actually fight this. But I guess he doesn't want to take it. Okay. But it's good. We have now the rams and we can go for the attack. I want to attack the Rohan at the top side first. And then go for the Rohan at the bottom side. That's what you are supposed to do, by the way, in a in a in this map, especially because the distance from the right to the left side is a huge distance, and not only that, but also if you move out, uh, you will not be able to defend yourself at the same time. But if I move to the top side, in the worst case scenario, I can just move back, just in case somebody is attacking my base. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I think two rams are enough. Oh, this Rohan has full upgrades too, but... Uh, Theodin, hey Theodin, <laughs> I will cripple you, my friend. You know what is up, Theodin? You shall not move. Boom. Dude, Lord has to be and is definitely the most cost-efficient hero in the entire game. I'm telling you. Boom on your face. You can heal all you want. You think you can you can out-damage my Vork Riders? Oh, and Theodin is no more. Let's use Palantir. This is going to be a movement bonus for the, for the Vorks. And this way they can chase up and catch those who hit him. And it's very important to get many power points collected during all this time. I can steal them, but it looks like the Gondor Knights, they don't want to work command. One of them is level 4, but he needs more than a few levels to deal with that. Okay, okay, now it's time to siege this Rohan. Let's go, boys. prevail. Okay, I, I don't know if he can defend this, but because we just killed his Theorin, and it means he has no more leadership available. And, and that's very good for us, because we need to play around... Oh my goodness, the Mumakirs are going to war. I see you, Mumakirs. I see you. And the problem is, if this Mordor goes to us, we have nothing. I mean, we have Pikemen, and if you don't know, Pikemen are actually good against monsters. I mean, they are very underrated against monsters. So if they trample the Pikemen... Or if they ignore the pikemen, the pikemen can deal crazy amount of damage to even Mumakirs. Don't touch my ram. I'm gonna fireball you. Take this. Boom. Okay, dude, I get away. Can I get away from this? There is even a lumber mill worker coming. You see this? <laughs> okay. Hopefully this mod is not gonna come to come to me because I will I will bash him. With double leadership, double damage leadership on my, you know, combos, I will one-shot those movement kills. Trust me, that one. Like, they don't stand a chance. That's in total 110% damage. My wargs are running it down. Don't die, dude. I, I cannot afford to lose you. You just get away, please. Get away, please. Get away, please. Oh, in the meantime, what is happening? Dude, I'm telling you, boys. I'm I'm gonna steal them. Okay, I stole them. I'm gonna send them to the movement kills now. Go, go fight against the movement kills, dude. Okay, it's not my army, it is, it is, you know, it's like only for a short duration, so we can feed the Mordor, and in the meantime also we can kinda get those level 5 Gondorites killed. Okay, nice. Gondor is losing a lot of momentum. Let's try to kill those, burst those Mumu kills down, shall we? Porcupine, I can cover this. Porcupine formation with the with the pikemen. The Mumu kills, they still don't care. Boom, fireball. Dude, not even fireball hurts them. Please die, Mumu kills. Look, the pikemen. You see the pikemen, boys? Don't touch my Saruman, Nazgûl, and Witch King. You see my pikemen are crushing them, dude. Oh, nice. The pikemen from Isengard. You don't want to joke with them. Trust me. Nice. So we killed them. But unfortunately, we lost a lot. We lost a lot. I think we lost one of the war riders too. That's kind of unfortunate. With only two left. But it is how it is. We killed a lot. And that's good. Even though it's kind of lame that I'm fighting against Mult, look, this Gondor is coming to me as well. Even though it's kind of lame that everybody's going against me, but it's good on the other side because we are able to collect enough power points for later on. Now we are really close for the Freezing Rain, and then the next step is going to be the Ancient Demon, the Balrog of Morgoth.
Okay, so I think um, the Rams, they won't do anymore anything for us. So we need to make a transition into something stronger. And with something stronger, I mean the Ballista early on, but later on, the Explosive Mines. They're gonna take a part in this game, trust me. And I wanna make those Pikeman Crossbowman combo just in case the enemy might trample into us. You know, that's pretty good. And every time your Speechcraft is available, keep leveling them up always. There is no reason to not to. If one of the wards level 5, even that's pretty good. But we need more army, and very soon we will be command points cap boys. Okay, let's make a move now. I want to actually move to the Rohan at the bottom side. I want to see what he's up to. And hopefully we can damage him a lot with the two Ballista. Hopefully we are able to break in and take him out of the game. I'm coming for you, bro. I'm, let's let's send these scouts. You know, the, the scouts first. The works. They can actually scout what is happening. You see how much faster your heroes are in compared to your combos. The combos, and that's one of the things. You lose a lot of benefits. So first of all, you cannot use the porcupine formation. You don't have the movement speed anymore. You cannot use the wedge formation uh, for the for the crossbow man. Oh, infantry, elven army. Oh, what oh, are you doing, Saruman? You white wizard is a dead wizard. Can I kill this Legolas? Dude, it's elven army combos and everything. We have also lots of leadership. He's focusing. Oh my goodness, the Gimli is jumping inside the jeans. Freezing rain, but is it not too late for this one? We need to revive this Iron Man immediately. I mean, Lord has to be closer to the army, but Legolas doesn't want to die. They have so much healing from the heal from the spellbook and then Atelas from Aragorn. And there was a huge loss for us, boys. Now we gotta run for our lives. Dude, this Gimli is messing me up. Uh, you can, when you use Sleep Attack with Gimli, when he is using Slayer, it will deal much more damage. And that's exactly what happened. He messed my army completely up. I mean, if somebody else comes now to our side, it's gonna be over for us. Oh, I see Rohirrim Arch Battalions. The thing about Rohirrim Arch is, you know, the good thing is they are mobile, you know what I'm saying? They can, you know, hit from a safe distance, they are mobile, but they need leadership from Elma. Without Elma leadership, they are not very useful. While elves, they have longer range, and it's much easier to spot them because you can recruit Aragorn. Aragorn is as fast as the elven units. And this way you have Theoden and Aragorn at least for increased 80% increased damage, which is enough. And also, in the new version of the patch 2.22, Legolas also grants them additionally uh, some increased damage leadership, which makes them even more viable in this new patch. 2.22. Okay, at this point we need to recovery. Uh, we need to recover a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because we lost Saruman, we need to revive him. That's gonna take us some time. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna hide some explosive mines, boys. Now it's the time for us to hide them and eventually beat the opening player later on to get close to the mines, and then we can make it boom boom chakalakala. You know what I'm saying? Like Either with the fireball from Saruman or with one of the combos. And it's the, it, you need to pay attention. If you don't pay attention to where you step, the explosive mine might mess you up. And hopefully our opponent is not going to pay enough attention to this. We shall see. I mean, we are recovering our army, but the problem is our, uh, our army is not highly leveled yet. You know what I'm saying? So I want to fight once again to the against the Rohan play at the bottom set. I want to keep fighting because I'm still 18 power points away from the Balrog Summon. Okay, this seems to be an army Warfare of Isengard, Warfare of Orphank. And let's go, let's go. We need Saruman to get level 8 for the Bill of Saruman to be unlocked, then we can also heal him up for the worst case scenario. And I also need to pay, pay a bit more attention to my heroes. I mean, my, my Saruman, I didn't pay attention, and he just got one-shotted. He's a very squishy hero after all, so he won't be able to burst. I mean, especially Legolas, you know, Legolas from a long distance, hitting like a truck. Oh, can I cripple him? Please, please. Uh, did I miss it? Yeah, I missed it. Oh, he didn't... What? Why didn't my lord cast it? Very weird. Okay. I can swear to you that I clicked on him. Okay. Alright. Now I'm gonna beat him. I need to beat him in, boys. I need to beat him in. So I need to try to beat him in. And if I beat him in somehow, you, we need to hit at least 400 likes on this video, okay? Deal or no deal, guys. I gotta beat him in. Hold on. You see the explosive mine on the ground? That's my plan. Can I cripple him? Nah, nah. 
Look, the, the way I'm moving, you see? Oh, 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 oh. Can I, can I do it? Can, you see, I'm paying attention. Boom, son, hold your face. Hey, 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 hey. That's what I'm talking about. That's the power of Isengard, boys. Holy guacamole. You love to see it. His entire army got blown up. Literally blown up. Dude, that was a juicy moment. Holy moly, guys. Let's go. I mean, you cannot be even upset about it because you know, that was a 200 IQ play right there, boys. Come on now. <laughs> I can read them like a book, dude. Okay, now it's my time. And look how many power points we got during all this fight too. We have at seven power points. We need 13 more for the for the Balrog. And Balrog is a game-winning ability, as you know. And the Rohan needs to use its bare minimum, the, the AOD, to defend against my Balrog. Okay, now is the time for us to shine. Now, now, now. And don't forget about our deal, guys. We said 400 likes. Okay? Dude. <laughs> okay, you cannot make this thing up, boys. Let's kill these banners. They're actually quite tanky, the small banners. And I don't know if he can defend this. He has still many, many Alvin warriors, but he's getting clumped for a potential fireball moment. Boom! Fireball on your face. But he's smart. He's always targeting my heroes, and look how squishy Saruman is. He's getting blown up in a few seconds. Freezing Rain is still on cooldown. I don't know about committing here. I don't want to gate rush either because the gate is not close yet. Uh, destroyed yet, I mean. And it's kind of weird because I cannot attack them properly, you know what I'm saying? So I think we need to kind of bail. And try to kill Legolas. I'm going to cripple them actually. And hopefully I will be able to take him down. Rain is almost available. The Legolas, I'm telling you, is hitting so hard. He's hitting so hard. And he's always focusing on my heroes. I'm spe I, I want to use the freezing rain. Now I can use it. Legolas though, he's healing him. Oh, one of the opponents has been defeated. Shark has been defeated. Okay. Can I steal them? Can I somehow steal them? It is a Gimli messing me up. Aragorn, kill him. Nice. We got 10 power points. We got 12 power points. But unfortunately, Saruman died once again. I could have used the Will of Saruman, but I didn't pay attention. My bad, guys. And this Rohan heroes, though. The Gimli especially. Dude, Gimli is so underrated. If he wants to, he can always uh, kill my heroes. I have to cripple Gimli, but I want to actually cripple other heroes I can kill faster. Meaning Theodin and or Legoras. I can cripple him, but my cripple is on cooldown. Look how tanky he is. Like, he's one of the tankiest heroes. He has so much dodge chance. So basically, against arrows, he's so tanky. Can I cripple him somehow? But the question is, can I kill him after crippling him? That's the big question. I see a Gondor coming also. Look how many highly leveled Gondor Knights he has on the field. Holy moly, guys. Please die, Gimli. Please die, dude. I can cover this. He doesn't want to die, but I need to kill him. Nice. What? The Gondor is coming by and using the... the what? This is teaming, boys. Don't do that. Did you guys see what happened? I was fighting against Rohan and the Gondor... Oh my goodness. What is this Mordor army in the meantime? He just fed a lot of power points. When you kill the Eagles, you actually get so many power points collected and he fed them a lot. And what, why did you do that? Why would you just summon randomly an eagle summon on my face? I don't... What? Gondor, you will pay for this. Trust me, you will pay for this. If a Ballista army now, we need to revive, you know, Saruman once again. We need to remake an army we have lost. But the good thing is, I think we are winning the PowerPoint department. I, I don't know if anybody is close to the Balrog as, or as close to the AOT as we are to the Balrog, guys. Okay. Oh, Cloudbreak. I see you. Okay. I mean, this Rohan is actually still in the game. I thought this is going to be the defeated guy, but no. I think there is another player. I think there were in total three Rohans, but I think one of them has been defeated. Maybe the one at the bottom left side. Okay. So we need to keep fighting to not lose the momentum we have with the power points. And Saruman is back in the business. Now we have also the Bill of Saruman. That's pretty good. And with the four or five palisas we have on the field, we can definitely break into the gates from the top side Rohan and take him out next. Explosive mines. We can spam them at this point and send them randomly to some weird places in the map. And sometimes we actually get a notification that you killed stuff. Because the thing is, it can be triggered from the opponent uh, fire. So basically, if they don't pay attention, they put fire on it. When the mine is close to them, the mine can actually kill everything. 
seven power points collected. I'm gonna use the fireball. Again, it's about, you know, fishing power points, but my fireball got also ranged. I mean, if you don't know, there is like a limited range for the fireball into cripple. And if the target is out of the range, it will go off, but it won't deal any damage. And that's exactly what happened in this situation. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if the two combos are going to be enough. And Freezing Rain is on cooldown too, and uh, that's going to be a tough one. We shall see if we can make it work. Okay, in the worst case scenario, we have healing, we have war chant, we have also insane amount of leadership bonuses. And I'm hiding also some explosive mines left and right. Now, just, we might make it happen once again eventually, who knows. Okay, let's break in the gate first. I'm going to also make it boom boom now at the wall from Rohan. Just like in the Helm's Deep version, we're gonna put a, put a hole in the, in the castle. Do it. Just do it. Oh, oh, boom. They are falling for it. These are not paid actors, guys. Let me tell you that much. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Shanks, they are paid actors. No, they are not. You wanted to kill the mine before I could blow it up. But, dude, I'm on, on point. I'm, dude, I'm playing out of my mind today or what? What is going on? 18 power points collected. I see Gandalf with a huge Gondor army at the bottom side. Oh, you wanna fight this Rohirrim Arches? Oh, you have no more leadership available. I just killed your Theodine. I will kill you. I will destroy you. Feast on his flesh. As Witch King would like to say. Look, I'm hiding them. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna use Fireball. Boom. We need power points collected. Okay, I can use Warchan and go inside the jeans actually, guys. I think... I think let's finish off this Rohan first. Okay, let's go. And I think during this fight we will get enough power points. Oh, oh. Oh, we stole only one of them though, it's okay. We can actually make them fight against each other. Let's use Will of Saruman to heal him up. Boom. No one can contest with the Will of Saruman. Okay, we are only less than half a power point away from the Balrog Summon boys. In the meantime, we gotta make more army. But the thing is, the second you defeat somebody, you will also get more command points available. Because less players are gonna be involved in the gameplay, right? Oh, he's summoning the elves, but I can blast them away. This up blast them. And yeah, this Rohan is going to be definitely defeated. Unless some shenanigans are going to happen. And we have 21 power points in the bank. That's more than we need. And now, for the next big fight, we have the chance to summon one of the mightiest creatures in the entire game. The Balrog. Okay, good. We have also freezing rain for the worst case scenario. I'm actually gonna use the Balrog summon um, at the... I, I wanna kill the Rohan first at the bottom set. Because I believe that's very important for me to move away from my side of the map to the left side. Because if I ignore him and I move to opposite side of the map, then there is a chance this Rohan might come to my base, which is gonna be undefended. So, and this guy was also buying Stormworker. <laughs> Stormworker, you see the improved gate and the wall and the towers shooting with lasers. So pretty strong castle of Gondor. We need to be smart about when and where to use the Balrog summon. The only way the Rohan can deal with that is actually when he has the, um, the EOD. So when, you know, with the army of the dead, obviously you can kill the Balrog. But without army of the dead, the Rohan will be defeated fully. Okay, good. Power points are rising to the sky. The first player, and the second player actually, because one of them has been defeated, which was not by me. Archeleon has been defeated now, that's good. It means from six players initially in this free for all match, only four players are remaining. Guys, you know what time it is, boys, right? You know what time it is. Oh, the Witch King and the Nazgul. I, I, I don't know about that. You don't want to do this, my friend. You don't want to do this, Mordor. I can shut you down with my with my rain. Trust me on that one. I can look my money. You don't want to fight this. You don't want to fight this. You want to fight this? Maybe he has too many. Or okay, look, he's insecure. I'm insecure. He has more kills and many many trolls. So I don't know about fighting this either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This Mordor is looking strong. And I think he was also scared from the freezing rain. But it's okay. It's not about. It's about to summon the demon from the ancient world. Ooh. You want to use Ignite while you're flying. That means when you land, you will be ignited at the same time. You see? You want to be efficient with your time when you summon Balrog. Now let's use Breath Fire. Remember in the patch 2.2, we nerfed the Breath Fire from Balrog. Oh, Aragorn, what are you doing, Aragorn? Aragorn is like, I can fight this. <laughs> Dude, this is a Balrog. Uh, you know, this is... 
Oh, what is happening in the meantime? Oh my goodness. Oh, he got... Can I... Fireball? Oh, he wanted to use the water power. Did you guys see this? But my... Oh, this guy has EOD. Dude, I'm playing against five people at the same time. Or what is going on? The guy is summoning eagles on me now. Let's use... Okay, you can kill lords. I think we can kill you before you can do this. Lords is level 9, by the way. He's very, you know, very, very strong. Oh my. You see, I'm fighting against two guys at the same time. It's bare minimum, man. I want to fly on them. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, he thinks he's safe out there. Hey, say hello to my little friend. 70% <laughs> person of his army got... I mean, I think the Balrog, yes, we were not able to finish him off. But I think we did a phenomenal job dealing crazy amount of damage, especially taking out a very big part of his army. It was really good. Ah, uh, you, you see this, boys? You see what I'm saying? Nobody is believing me when I say, hey, I'm legit playing against three guys, four guys at the same time. But that's a proof. Like, that's the second time somebody is using AOD on me. The one guy was using AOD against my Balrog. And now the Gondor to kill my army. And my Lord is zooming, though. My Saruman is in a good spot. Now he has many, many Gondorites upon the field. And we need to recruit multiple pikemen. He is summoning also the, the Rohan allies. The EOD is going to be gone very soon. And we got to try to defend this, man. I don't know. He will be able to deal so much damage. Level 10, level 9 Gondorites. They are hitting so hard. Yes, the Isengard base is quite tanky with the level 3 furnaces. But still, there is just too much stuff happening. We need to use Fireball. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't think he can defeat us because he was not able to kill the Uruk pit yet. And that means we can... Oh, Mordor is coming. Look, Isengard goes for 8 and Mordor will answer. The Mordor is... I'm not... Again, not paid actors, guys. Not paid actors. Okay. All right. I think the Mordor is also trying to get power points because every player involved... So I have Balrog. The Rohan was just using Balrog to defend against my Balrog. I mean, AOD to defend against my Balrog. And the Gondor was just using AOD against my army. So basically, three out of four players have their ultimate summons available. I think Mordor doesn't yet. And that's why when, when you find yourself in a spot like this, when you realize, okay, my opponent has EOD, but I don't have Balrog yet, then you need to play out of your mind. You need to play super aggressively because you cannot feed him anymore. That's very important. Please do this. If you realize you are behind in the power points, there is no reason to not fight though. You need to extremely be offensive and you need to force fights. Force them every time, even if you lose more than you gain. But you need to close the gap in the power points department to get to your own Balrog summon ASAP. That's the key to victory, guys. Especially in free-for-all games. Trust me. I mean, the Balrog is reloading. I, I don't know if he can actually win against this Rohan at the bottom side without the Balrog. I mean, we can try, obviously. But again, that's going to force us to build some more switch weapons because we are still not able to break through his kit. I want to use Palante to this... Ooh, what is happening here, dude? That's a big fiesta fight. And you see, guys, I'm taking care of you. Even though you cannot see this fight because it's not me fighting, but I still give you vision. So you know what is up, you know? That's crazy. The Mordor against Gondor situation. We need to also participate in those fights, though. Oh my goodness. I think the Mordor is kind of too scared. I mean, there is a Stormworker, and those towers, they have lasers, so they are hitting very, very hard, but... Again, he needs to be the one who is forcing fights. He has no Balrog yet. And even if you lose all these trolls, it doesn't matter. You need to force a fight. You need to. Otherwise, the Gondor can just camp it out and wait for the second EOD summon. And then all your trolls and Moomer they're gonna die anyway. Okay, so I think it's time um, to go once again, but again, we need siege weapons first. I always forget, and that's the annoying part about playing against good factions, because you cannot do much without siege weapons. But the opponent, oh, Cloudbreak, but the opponent doesn't need, Clau um, doesn't need siege weapons against us. Okay, we have level 10 Saruman, level almost 10 Lords. Look the movement speed. And you cloud break besides stunning the enemy units when they are level one or level two, unless they are fear resistant, they will also low I mean cloud break will also lower the armor and also the movement speed by 30% each. For like 10 seconds. And I think the movement speed like for 30 seconds. Which is a huge thing. Uh, when you play good against good faction like Gondor against Rohan, for example, and there is a cavalry fight, which is in most cases the case when you can use cloud break to stun them first. 
and then to store them afterwards, and you can chase them, catch them, and take them out. The way you want to use power points in this game, especially the summons, is you want to use them to get more power points collected. So you want to use eagles to get to kill heroes, and with the help of the eagles, you want to collect more power points. You want to use elves to kill pike to get more power points. You want to use Rohirrim to kill structures to get more power points. Oh my goodness. Look the laser shots though. Dude, Mordor is losing legion everything there. Holy moly. We need map control, boys. Map control is very important. I mean, I know what you're thinking. You say, yeah, but Shanks, you have a lot of money. But again, there is a chance there is going to be another battle of uh, EOD summon very soon. And then I need to remake everything once again. You have my heroes, remake army, and that costs a lot of cash. So we need to invest now for the bad days later, you know? You gotta be smart. And map control is always important in every single format, in every single game. Because... When you have map control, not only you will get more money, but also your opponent gets less money, which is like a win-win situation. Okay, so we have Badrock once again, very, very soon in about 20 seconds. And remember, I used Badrock before he used the EOD. So my Badrock is, if you don't know, Badrock and EOD, they have the same cooldowns. And he used the EOD like 10 seconds later. I think we need to use the momentum to do stuff in those 10 seconds period because i don't think i can defeat him without actually my balrog because inside beast he's very strong towers highly leveled heroes and lots of elven warriors my heroes cannot survive this burst they will die in a few seconds okay i'm waiting for the cooldown I will, ideally in a dream world he's gonna come out and try to fight us then i can summon the balrog on top of his army that's like a dream situation. So I'm trying to keep my distance and more or less hoping that he will move out of the castle to fight against me. <laughs> then if then I can just summon... Oh? Uh, is he gonna do it though? Oh, he's coming. Or? Uh, what is he up to? I don't know. We need to kill the gate. We need to force him out of the castle because I cannot summon the Balrog inside the castle. I want him to come out. That's what I'm aiming for. Because then it's, then it's gonna be like a win-win situation. I can summon Balrog and kill all his army and then destroy his castle afterwards. My Balrog is available. Oh, 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 oh. Is he doing it? Yes, sir! Hey, boom! This is so satisfying, dude. Let's kill the gate first. I mean, we don't need... I think... The, okay, the ram... Uh, the, at least I killed it. Uh, Give me you shall not move, by the way. I know he has EOD very soon. He's, he just used the Cloud Break, and my units got stunned. Why? Because they were on the Elven Wood. On the Elven Wood, they have no fear resistant. I mean, the Elven Wood shuts down leadership bonuses. Okay? Now we're gonna make stuff happen, boys. Kill the Archer range. Okay, he's gonna summon EOD very soon. I, I guess, like, right now, yeah. But it's okay. I think we can still do it. Because every building beside the one level 3 farm is level 1. It means we can just one-shot them at this point, you see? We can even fly on them and it gets one-shotted. We don't even need to use Ignite. Can we do it though? Please. I'm gonna kill you, EOD. Take this. Take breath fire on your face. I killed your EOD in your last farm. You cannot build it. I will not allow it. I will jump on, on it. And GG's. Matthias has been defeated too. Okay, we defeated the Rohan top and the Rohan at the bottom side. Now, we know the Rohan at the bottom left side has also been defeated. And there is a fight between Gondor and Mordor. Okay? And that's the time. Very soon, the Gondor will have also EOD. And the problem is, he's on the opposite side of the map. So we need to walk a long distance. And I'm trying to sneak in those explosive mines, but it's easier said than done because he has the Stormworker. <laughs> And uh, the Stormwalker is actually killing those mines before they can reach out to the wall. Oh, I see a Balrog from Mordor. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I want to see this, actually. Hopefully, the <laughs> I would rather fight against Mordor than against Gondor, because the Gondor is camping, and that's horrible for me, which will force me to get many, many Ballista to break through the defense, but when it's only Mordor, I can use Freezing Ring and go inside the beast without having any siege weapons recruited. Crossbow is ready. 
Okay, boys. So we need to wait once again for Saruman's revival. Uh, the more leveled your heroes are, the longer the duration is for the revive. You don't know. And there is a fight between Mordor and Gondor. Okay. Oh, I see many, many Gondorites upon the field. Huh? What is the Balrog up to? Oh, the Balrog is doing some stuff. He's still time remaining, though. Can he finish it off? I don't know. Can he kill the steeple level 3? Like, you see how many towers he has on the field. Can I deploy this bomb? No, I can't. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I want to actually send in... I want to have map control, for, first of all. We need to wait for Saruman and uh, then we can move out. I'm going to get some more explosive mines. He killed the staple level 3, but I don't think the Balrog has enough time to finish it off. And you see our money. But Mundo has been defeated. What? Oh, the Mordor player has been defeated. What happened during all this time? I think they were going for a beast trade. In which I think the Gondor was using EOD to finish the Mordor. And now it's a one you What? That's kind of surprising. Okay, now we are talking. I think the Gondor player defeated the Mordor and the other Rohan. I defeated the two Rohans. Now it's a situation between Gondor and Isengard. I defeated two, he defeated two. But the only problem for us is that the distance is a long distance. So, with the combos, it will take so much time to actually travel. Yeah, Mordor has been defeated indeed. Mordor has been defeated. If you're wondering why, there is like a golden rule. You don't buy a second castle in free-for-all matches. And never do that. If you buy a second castle in multiplayer, when you play free-for-all, that's gonna be the last free for all you will play with these guys because they will not play with you anymore, you know? It's like a golden rule. Because if you do this, it's a huge advantage, obviously, having a second castle. And it's like a like a cheat. And you don't wanna do this, you know what I'm saying? So free for all, second castle, and no go. But we need we can take every single settlement outside. Because our money is not looking that good. Dude, this guy has an army of Gondor knights. And now look, oh my goodness, look how many Gondor knights he has on the field! Holy moly. Oh, Fireball. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this, please. Watch this Fireball now, guys. Oh, fireball! We can cover this and use War Chant. In the rain. Okay. I can also heal them at this point. Um, okay. I mean, he just lost a lot of his Gondonites. But he has so many of them. I cannot underestimate them. If they come to my base like this, they will destroy me. Okay. Now, I'm bringing also the pikemen. He has so many of them, dude. Our money is looking good, but again, there is a chance he might summon AOD once again on us, and it's gonna be over. You know what I'm saying? I wanna make this... Oh, the war of power! Dude, this game was crazy, man. Level 10 heroes, all the power points, AOD, eagles, Gandalf level 10, war of power, balrogs, multiple balrogs. What else do you want to see from a free-for-all match? The problem is the wall is so powerful now with the storm worker. Look, you see? It won't even get one shot at this point. You see this? That's crazy, my man. Oh, you wanna actually take care of my explosive mine? No, leave my What is my Saruman doing there? Saruman, you are crazy, my friend. Saruman, you are crazy. But he has too many Gondonites. Can I steal them? I stole a couple of them. I wanna actually send them in to deal with this catapults. Oh, but that's not good. He crashed my <laughs> combos. I, I can cripple him, but I don't think I can finish him off, boys. I, I don't think I can finish him off. I don't think I can finish him off. We killed a couple of catapults, so that's good. Maybe we can kill even... Die, die Faramir? No, Faramir didn't even die. I was trying to kill Faramir with my with the horses. I stole from him. But if you kill Saruman after he stole something, the, the spell is going to be immediately released, you know? And the problem is now the revive time. And the, the travel time, the distance between him and me. And he's making sure to kill every single one of my explosive mines. The good thing is we have map control. I mean, I think he doesn't have that much money. And we need to make sure that it stays like that. And I think in order to do this, pull this off, we need some mobile units up on the field. You know? And for the Isengard faction, these are the Vork Riders. We have almost Balrog back up. Hopefully with the Balrog we can make some shenanigans happen. But in the meantime... Always keep focusing on map control. That's the key to victory. That's the key to victory. Okay, so. We need more and more stuff, boys. I mean, 
Look our money now, all of a sudden. We are poor, as you can see, right? Look at this money. We had like, at some point, we had like 20,000. And now, now we are below uh, 500. <laughs> because we, need, we spend money all the time. But luckily for us, we have devastation every couple of minutes. We have fuel the fires. That means we need to make sure to keep those lamber mills outside protected to get the money. Because inside the castle, we have only three furnaces. Which is not enough to make the money we need to, you know, maintain two Uruk pits, two war pits in a level 3 siege works. You know, that's not possible. Okay, so you cannot fight this with the Gond Gondonites, by the way. Level 4 Gondonites, oh, he's gonna pay attention. And we need to upgrade them too. The problem is, with only three furnaces, upgrades, they cost 680. You know, the forge plates and heavy armor, that's a lot of money. But now we have the Balrog. Hopefully with the Balrog, we might be able to finish it off, but I don't, I don't know. Like... I don't know, we shall see. Let's use the Ignite once again. You want to be efficient with your time. You have only a very limited time with the Balrog and with AOD. That means you need to know what you are up to. Uh, hopefully this Prefire is going to be working out. Go, go, go. I missed the stable behind. What? Did you guys see this? I missed the stable behind. That's horrible, actually. But it's okay, we can kill the Siege Wargs at least. I, I don't think I will be able to finish him off, but I will be able to deal a great amount of damage to him. Gate Rush, let's go. He's camping. There is no Gate Rush if he's camping, boys. <laughs> can I do it? No, he's not gonna die, dude. He's level 10, you know, he doesn't wanna die. He's also healed. I need to ignore him, guys. I cannot let him distract my Balrog, you know what I'm saying? My Balrog cannot pay attention to this. If I can kill the level uh, level 1 Steeple, that's gonna slow him down at least. We have Saruman back in the business. But I think, I mean, the VIP is on cooldown. Use Prefi at least. Okay. Uh, I won't even hit this rebuilding citadel. That's unfortunate. Ah, I mean, that's like a very bad Balrog summon. In my lords, I didn't pay attention to him, dude. Oh, man. I mean, was close, but not close enough. Uh, and that's bad, because now the problem is in late game, when you play Isengard against, you know, Gondor, or any faction. Oh, that was a nice fireball. Very late game, in which everything is unlocked from the spell book, Gondor has just too many summons, you know, like Rohirrim summon, Ranger summon, Eagle summon, and you can do that every few minutes, while your only summon is Balrog. Yeah, Balrog is basically and technically stronger than any of the summons, but it's just not enough. If you cannot finish the castle off alone, it's bad, you know? And we are kind of broke, as you can see and tell, right? We need to make an army, we need to keep reviving Lords and Saruman all the time. Oh, we stole him. I can kill this Farami now. I think this Ro uh, this Gondor is also not... Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, okay. Is this, is this it, boys? Is this GG now? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the problem is... We have no more money. And he has EOD. The EOD in those situations is so much better than Balrog. Because it gives you the chance to kill the high level units. And heroes especially. Which is much more damaging in terms of economy. And actually killing buildings. Hmm. Do it. Luckily in patch 2.22 everything got nerfed. So the Balrog is a bit weaker. The EOD is a bit weaker. And slower. And has less duration. On the field. Oh, Ganav is here. Um... I'm gonna aim every tower on Gandalf. Every one of them. Like, select your furnaces and everything level 3. He missed the War of Power, by the way. I mean, my wards were out of the range. Um, in the meantime, keep focusing on map control. You see, towers, when you aim them all on Gandalf manually like this, it will deal actually a great amount of damage to him. And he will be forced to disengage. You see, that's very important. Oh, that was really close. He almost lost them, actually. We have still many, many pikemen. I don't think he can finish off the base yet. He can go for a trample. Oh, he has even a trebuchet with Firestone. We need to take it down. Dodge! Go, 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 go! Okay, he missed it. I mean, he only hit one of them. But the Vorks, they have Warchant and everything. They don't die that fast. In the meantime, we gotta make sure to get map control to get the money we need to revive the heroes because we have no money. We cannot revive even Sar Saruman yet. Now, we are kind of poor. You see, Lourdes, <laughs> barely. <laughs> but Saruman, no. Saruman level 10 costs 3,000 to be revived. Which is a lot of money. Especially when you have no map control. Okay? Need more. We need more. Let's buy every... The good thing is, once we have like 6 mils uh, with the field of fires, we should be basically growing rich. Money for Isengard. You know, Isengard is an industry faction, boys. 
Later on, you have too many tools to make money. The problem is, however, <laughs> the money you make is actually depending on the map. So, like, devastation and also lumber mills, they give you money when you can harvest trees or turn trees into the resources. But the longer the game goes on, the less trees are going to be available on the map and the less money you will be able to make as Isengard because you have devastation and lumber mills, they will be shut down as well as the field of fires. You know what I'm saying? They won't be that effective any anymore. Okay, here's um, the Eodion cooldown, I have Padrock on cooldown. We, I need to kind of find a solution to the Scandalf, which is easier said than done. I think the only way we can actually take care of him is by getting Cripple. We need to kind of find a way to cripple him down. The, the thing is, Gandalf level 10, when he loses him, not only he will be, you know, wasting lots of time to get him back on the, on the field, but also he costs him 3,500 to be revived, which is... That's why map control is important, because if you if we can kill him and we can deny him the map control, we can make sure that he has not the money to revive him. Okay, I mean, <laughs> our money is not looking good either. And he's now fighting back, back for the map control, which is smart from him. Okay. I want to send in those Berserkers to actually make it boom boom. <laughs> But hopefully he's not paying attention. I mean, if he's paying attention, this bears are because they won't they will never be able to reach. Yeah, yes. Yeah, there is no chance. There's too many Gondor Knights upon the field. He's spamming them, by the way. He's spamming Gondor Knights now. Which also means he's investing lots of money into that. Like Gondor Knights with all upgrades, they cost a lot of money. Cloud Break stun. But why would you use Cloud Break when you don't want to kill my Varks? I don't understand. Works. What is he up to? Um, I don't know. I want to go for my bees. With Rohirrim summon once again. I don't know about this. I don't think this is going to work out for him. But we shall see. Can I cripple him somehow? This kind of... If I can cripple him, that's going to be actually big. We need to spam Pikeman at this point to defend the bees. Oh! He got crippled. But can I kill him? Um, I think I can kill him because we have Lord's Leadership plus Warchant. I'm gonna use Warchant on my Pikeman to actually kill him eventually. Oh, he's actually dam damaging me big time. In the meantime, take care of the map control. Oh, I don't even need to use Warchant here. Can please, Lord's? Boom! And we get a lot of money for killing him too because of pillage from Lord's. That's very good. Very, very good actually. And now, you need to invest like three minutes. And to get him back in the uh, on the field and also lots of money. Damn, this game was actually quite exhausting, guys. Holy moly. <laughs> I wasn't expecting such an exhausting game because we were dominating the early mid game, but dude, all these summons, they are repeating itself all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like Rohirrim summon, and then a few minutes later, Rohirrim summon, Eagle summon, Ranger summon, EOD summon. Let's go, let's go. Let's use Palantir and Warchant and boom. They are shining bright like a diamond. Love to see it. Map control wise, we are doing a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. Um, Balrog is almost back up. I think with the Balrog, what I need to do is I need to kind of make sure to kill his gate, you know? And then go in with the Warks. I think that's what, I'm, what I need to do eventually. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. I, I cannot... I don't know. I don't know. We will see. I'm gonna actually kill the gates first. So I can go in. You know, that's the plan. Okay, now I can fly inside. And my, the problem is I was using Warchan a bit too early. And Warchan and Hole are... On, oh my goodness, my Lord died somehow. I need to revive him. And my... Look, I'm, I'm so poor, dude. Okay, can I please do a good breath fight this time? Please. Oh, yes. My breath fire was still, again, again so horrible, dude. You see the eagle summon? It's annoying. <laughs> Let's kill the stable level 3 at least. It's gonna slow him down. That means minus 50% production speed in the marketplace is also very important to cut his resource income a little bit. I mean, at this point, we need to hope that we can, you know, kind of outscale him economically. And it, we need to kind of make him weak, money wise. So he cannot recruit more Gondonites anytime soon. He cannot revive his Ganalf. I think that's the only thing we can do. 
And killing those level 2 or level 3 blacksmiths is actually a very good start for this. We won't be able to finish it off, unfortunately. The base is not going to be finished. But ah, we won't be able to finish it off. Because I messed up the first breath fire. Uh, you need to be careful and accurate with your breath fire with Badrock. Okay. But it's okay. Uh, him re rebuilding the Citadel and also investing again 3,500 and 3 minutes plus for his Gandalf is actually quite meaningful. Now we gotta find a way to deal with this wave because he has again Badrock very soon. Uh, AOD very soon. And uh, that means all our army is gonna be kinda crushed. And we need to kinda be smart about it. We need to kinda try to hide some pikemen eventually somewhere on the map and when, when he summons the AOD and the AOD is gone then we need to kind of bring those pikemen in to deal with the gondolet because he has too many of them he's waiting for the AOD look how many he's bringing now guys that's crazy like he's also rich but very soon he will be poor very very soon he will be poor and very oh there comes the AOD and my lords who just came back <laughs> might die once again very soon so we need to kind of let him do. There is no counterplay to that. I don't have anything to answer AOD, you know. Lords can run for his life though. The AOD has not long time. So we can... I want to disengage. Wait for the AOD and then... I, oh my goodness, he found the pikeman. When the AOD is gone, I can use Carnage and fight the Rohirrim. And again, we have Pillage, which means we make money. Oh, that's bad though. He killed the Citadel. That's unfortunate. Because my Saruman was all about to enter the battlefield. Luckily, our money is looking good. I'm tilted, actually, guys. Dude, this is so exhausting, this game. What the heck? I don't want to lose my lords. Luckily, we have money. So we can actually buy stuff, rebuild stuff. The lords also gives fear resistance. With level 5. I'm actually gonna go inside the base now. We know the gate is broken. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. This might be a bad idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna group all my pikemen together and use Warchan and go inside the Gondor Castle. I gotta make it happen, boys, somehow. I need to find a way to finish him off, you know? The next Balrog, if he can survive until the next Balrog, is gonna be much more e efficient because every building will, will be only level 1 or level 2. And I believe he doesn't have that much money. Look at the minimap, guys. You see how much map control we get? I think he has maybe like two, maybe three farms. That's it. Like, we have full map control. I mean, we are spending money like crazy too, right? We are investing so much money into the units and also upgrades. And reviving heroes especially is so expensive. But we shall see. Okay, we need to make sure that he has no more money. That's the most important thing. And now I'm gonna... This... I don't know what this... Like... Desperate times. Desperate attempts. So I'm gonna group them all together. These five pikemen. Use war chant and try to deal as much damage to his economy once again as I can. Okay, we need two war pits. And again, war riders. I think what I need to do is with the next Balrog summon, I need to. Oh! Oh, he's paying attention. Ah, this is pointless. <laughs> this is pointless. Good. He has just too much defense. Like, look at these towers. My pikes with heavy armor plus forge plate. They die in a few seconds. I won't even be able to destroy any of these buildings, by the way. And that's like more than 5,000 resources investment going into the trash. That was a bad call, guys. Sorry for that. But I'm desperate. I'm really... I killed one farm. <laughs> worth it, I guess. Is it worth it? You let me know in the comment section down below. And by the way, guys, what do you think about this game? I think... Besides me being desperate at this point, it's a great game though. I mean, we made crazy plays with the explosive mines. I think it was fun. Hopefully it was fun for you to watch as well, guys. Okay, let's recover this and do it. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's smart. Like, he also starts fighting with the map control at this point, as you can see. I'm gonna group now these uh, Uruk pikemen because they are much tankier. And only pikemen, and they are also dealing a lot of damage to the structures. I just hope that he, he won't have his eagle summon available very soon. That, that's the only hope I have. So we have Lourdes and this army of Uruk cross Uruk pikemen combination. I'm gonna use freezing rain. Like all these summons from Gondor are so annoying to deal with, you know? That's the problem. I have also another Vork riders. The Balrog is almost back up. But hopefully, we won't need him. Oh man, this is desperate. I know. 
I know it's desperate, but... Oh, uh, guys, do you think he has eagles back up? I forgot totally about eagles, because if he has eagles, these combos, they are pointless, because they cannot even shoot. And I have nothing to fight against eagles with. Lords can give leadership this row here, and they shouldn't be able to fight this. He killed one of my titan, but it's okay. I can cover this, no problemo. I don't want to use war chant there, to be honest with you guys. Okay. Okay. Let's kill the farm first. We have two war riders. We need more. I want to get full map control. Let's send pikemen to every location, every single settlement on the map, to make sure that he doesn't have any money. It's the best way we can shut him down. So he cannot spam those condonites anymore like he did. Yeah, look, he's rebuilding his marketplace. Which is very smart. Because marketplace in a long game like this, and this has been like a really long... Oh my goodness. I knew it, boys. Dude, I'm calling it and I just still do it. Um, I think it's okay though. I mean, now you might call me crazy, but how is it okay? It's okay. Because now I can dodge with the pikemen, uh, with the with the war riders, and then I can wait for the eagles to be gone, to be disappeared. And then with the next Badrock, I can summon the Badrock, go inside, and then send in the Vorks this time. Last time I did that, he had like the eagles to answer that. But now he won't have the eagles summon available. My lord is gonna die. There is nothing I can do for him. Eagles are just hitting too hard. Like, you see this? A two hits by each eagle, and it's over, you know? We need to revive him. More pikemen. Send more pikemen. Map control is the key to victory. Maybe it's the only key we, ha we have. It's the only thing that keeps us actually in the game. That's very important. It requires lots of macro and also lots of focus, I know. But trust me, once you master it, it's worth it. So now it's time, boys. Now it's time. I'm gonna summon uh, the Balrog. Okay. Is the gate open from? Yeah, the gate is open. Okay, never mind. I thought he repaired it, but he didn't. Okay, now is the time. Now is the time. Breathfire now has to hit. We need to manage to kill, kill five buildings, dude. Oh, am I am I so bad with the Balrog? What's happening? Please, dude. That's the third attempt now already. Come on now. Yeah, that's the that's the Balrog summon I need to have. Okay, let's send send let's send in the War Riders, boys. The War Riders. And his eagles are on cooldown. That means he has no answer to my War Riders. Every tower is shooting Balrog. Balrog is immune to tower damage. And unless he cheated with the second castle, he will be defeated now. That means victory for the Isengard army, boys. Last Samurai has been defeated. GG, well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was really fun for me to play, but kind of exhausting in the last 25 minutes with the repeating of Balrog and AOD Summon. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep hitting like a track, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys. And make sure to leave a like, too.